how do you define wokeness? Because I hear people use the term all the time, and it means something different to, to everybody. Well, again, I think it's this collection of ideas that uh, are not building on liberalism, but very often undoing it. I mean, five years ago, I don't, Abraham Lincoln was not a controversial figure among liberals. We liked him. <laughs> now they take his name off schools and tear down his statues. Really? Lincoln isn't good enough for you? Um, you know, five, ten years ago, bedrock liberalism was we are striving to be a colorblind society where we don't see race. Um, of course, we see it, but it doesn't matter. That's not what woke is. Woke is something very different. It's, it's identity, it's, we see it all the time, it's always the most important thing. I don't think that's liberalism. I mean, I could mention so many issues like that. Jerkiness and masculinity, two words that are best described as a Venn diagram that never intersect. I, but the ultimate question of who is right always seems to be unanswered. Well, not in this video. There are moments where men were being men. They did hold back from the ideologies of some woke people who believed in delusion. Shall we begin? Vince Dow recently spoke in a group about important topics like white privilege, systemic racism, and success. He shared his views using straightforward logic and personal stories. As he made his points, many people around him reacted strongly, showing how heated these discussions can be. Dow's approach challenged the common beliefs held by some in the room. His ideas were clear and made sense, but they upset those who do identified as woke. Instead of engaging in calm conversation, many of them became emotional and defensive. This reaction revealed just how divided opinions are on these issues. His talk sparked a lively debate, highlighting the difficulty of discussing sensitive topics in today's world. Let's get raged into by how we communicate and listen to each other when discussing race and privilege. Let's look at some of the arguments Dow presented and why they caused such a stir. Check out the clip and let us know what you think. Statistically, it is true that Asians, right, on average, make more money, better test scores, get into better colleges, all that stuff. I think the question is, why is that? And I don't know, the model minority, whatever that label wants That's to That's actually mean, a not, myth because not, we cannot be... Um, well, no, listen, well, let me finish my point. We need to observe what makes people successful and unsuccessful. And I think when you look at trends that are generally true in the Asian community, not of everyone, but are generally true, usually you have families that are sticking together, you have people are taught to work hard in school, not get into trouble. I think that translates to why Asians on mass are successful. And I don't think you have to be Asian or white for that matter to not have kids out of wedlock, not, you know, commit crime, what? not not cause trouble, what whatever happening? it is. It's just a matter of like, well, common sense. That's what makes people successful. And if that's so-called assimilation, having a nuclear family, buying a house, going to school, whatever it is, then yeah, okay, call me a pro-assimilation then. I think there's a difference between assimilation and erasure. Yes. If this was average, check out how Michael Knowles fights off wokeism. Michael Knowles faced off against some college students who were eager to challenge him on the topic of hate crimes against transgender people. The students were confident, believing they could educating about the issues. However, Knowles was well prepared and had strong arguments. He pointed out flaws in their reasoning and questioned their understanding of the data. As the debate went on, the students struggled to keep up. Nolos effectively countered their points, making it clear that he had done his homework. The students seemed to falter under his quick responses and critical questioning. They found it difficult to articulate their views as Nolos pushed back on their claims. I like your cape. Thank you. It's a flag. What is, what's the flag? Soviet flag. Oh my gosh. I take it back. You claimed that the reason that there are more transgender people now is because they are more confused. The hate crimes against transgender people are much higher than those against any other demographic. So is it not more likely that there are more transgender people now because- Are there more hate crimes in the United States against transgender people or Jews? I guess transgender, but I am not sure. You are certainly not sure. That's right. It's, uh, uh, the answer is Jews. That just be a numbers thing though. Like, you're like, oh, it is a numbers thing, but you cited a numbers thing. So then I'm like, citing a different number. 0.1% of people in America are transgender, and yeah, like 100% of them could be like affected by crime. Is it not though more likely that people are identifying as transgender now because of a decrease in, in the percentage of hate crimes as opposed to previous decades? Uh, the identification is part of the confusion because a man isn't a woman and a woman isn't a man. There is sexual difference. The sexes are not indistinguishable, they're not indiscernible. And there's a great confusion in our culture that men can be women, but they can't. Knowles left the students looking unsure of themselves. Dot, while they had hoped to enlighten him about hate crimes and the experiences of transgender individuals, 
It became evident that they were not able to sway him. Instead, Knowles managed to turn the tables, showcasing his perspective with confidence and clarity. Well, you can't deng that it can be to talk about complicated social issues, especially when both sides have strong opinions. Let's see what's happening on the streets. Can you identify as a black person? No. Why? Because I'm not black. I'm not a woman, but I can identify as, as a woman, according to you. If you transition, maybe. What defines a transition? If that's your goal, you know? If you believe it. Sure. If you believe you're black, why aren't you black? Well, that's just not, that's like genetics. That's like ancestry. You're also born a man or a woman. It's the same thing. That's also genetics. Okay, I'm over it. <laughs> a man approached a feminist on the street and asked her an obvious firing as Hane question. If people can transition their gender, can they also transition their race? He wanted to understand her perspective on the idea that gender identity can change, just like the way some people change their physical appearance to align with their gen gender identity. Feminist paused. Considering the question, she explained that gender is often seen as a social construct, meaning it relates to how society understands masculinity or femininity. That's right, gone are the times when you announce boy or girl at you bath. However, she noted that race is torture historical and cultural factors, making it a more complex issue. The man pressed further, asking if someone could truly identify as a different race similar to how one might identify with a different gender. The feminist acknowledged that the conversation about race involves deep-rooted social issues, and she felt it was a sensitive topic. Yep, too sensitive. Moving on, we have a woke woman discussing women's rights that living women are more important than unborn fetuses. She emphasized the rights and needs of women who are already here. When someone challenged her by asking if a fetus isn't also considered living since it grows inside the womb, say, she seemed confused. The person questioning her pointed out that a fetus goes through stages of development, just like any living being. See for yourself. Life begins when you understand living women matter more than potential babies. What is it? What do you mean? If it's a potential baby, what is inside of a woman? It's a fetus. Is it living? No. no. How can it grow if it's not living? Actually, actually, that's like saying if an acorn is a tree. When does the fetus become living? No. Nope. <laughs> um, that's actually a good question, but that line... Yeah, of course, because you don't know it, because it's oh, living. Oh. It's living. Oh, wait a second, but I got something for her. When does this clump of cells or fetus become living? When it can sustain well, its own life. But when is the, when is the sustainability? How do you sustain life? Like, my newborns aren't sustainable. You can't just have a newborn and they just, like, live on their own, right? Right. They argued that both women and voters is a living, but the woman struggled to respond. As the conversation continued, it became clear that she hadn't fully considered the implications of her statement. We believe a good run-through of her own statement in her before she spoke would have saved her from some embarrassment while she was passionate about her beliefs. The question may have now forced her to think more, we hope. We have a theory that growing fetus is living and has the same rights as she. Do you agree? Then said, Chase, would you rather smash the hottest trans woman in the world or the oldest woman in the world? Honestly, bro, the oldest woman in the world, because then I wouldn't be gay. Are you like, uh, uh, Chase, yeah. how dare you be transphobic? Yes, actually, yeah. what the f*** do you mean? Because if I had sex with a trans woman, I'd be having sex with a biological man. And I don't want to do that. Because I'd be say, gay if I had sex with a biological man. That's not gay. That's gay. And I don't even catch up the f*** up, actually. I'm, I'm Why is that going to be a bar at all? She's right. I mean, that's really hateful, she's bro. Not, she's not. She's not. Would technically be homosexual. A trans woman is a biological man. Sue me. It's true. Yeah. Well, you know what God said? It said he made the man and women. Who knew that stating biological facts would make people walk off the show? During a taping of a show called Whatever, a man presented basic biological facts about sex and gender. He explained how biological differences exist between males and females, emphasizing that these differences are rooted in science. His calm and straightforward approach aimed to clarify the discussion. However, a woke feminist in the audience became increasingly upset as he spoke. She disagreed with his points and felt that he was dismissing the complexities of gender identity. Instead of engaging in a discussion, her frustration grew and she felt her views were being ignored. 
Eventually unable to contain her anger, she stood up and stormed out of the room. Her departure highlighted the tension between differing beliefs about gender and biology. While the man was focused on facts, she felt that the conversation undermined her perspective on gender as a social construct. What have we learned here? Emotionally charged discussions can occur when people have strong opinions on sensitive topics. And not just that, we may call ourselves broad-minded and open to all ideas but still fail the challenges of having open conversations about issues where differing viewpoints are expected to arrive. Talkism is up in the air as well. A passenger and a flight attendant got into a heated argument during a flight. Ah, what started as a simple disagreement quickly escalated into a loud discussion. They began to argue about gender and what it means to be a man. Hey, hey, hey. What? Hey. Do, do not get out in my face like this. You don't want, you do well, not want to be playing man to man? We can't talk man to man? We can't talk man to man? I don't think that's possible. That's not possible? Why? I don't think it's possible because Why? there's only one man standing in this aisle right now. Now and sit me. down, little miss. And before me, I go ahead and like get, child. I'm gonna go ahead and get TSA to go on this plane and haul you off. You want to make that big of a show why about it? Why would they haul me off? You want to make because that big of a show because you're not male? confirming the document that I have. You don't want to identify me as such? Uh, the government chose what to identify you when you were born in a hospital. They wrote M or F next to your birth certificate. Okay, that is my that, life. That was dictated by a power much and greater than mine. And it's my life, and I don't feel that way. A higher power than me. I'm not the authority. I'm a man. I'm not the authority that assigned you. You need to get up out of this place. You don't authority at all. She need to get up out of this place. I agree. Thank you, sir. If you continue this display, if you cannot confirm what my docket says here, that there are in fact two ladies sitting in this aisle, there is one. I'm sorry. You're gonna have to leave. Correct. There is one lady You're gonna have and to one man. Well, that's not what it says I need in these seats in order to- The tension between them grew as they exchanged words, each trying to prove their point. Other passengers watched, surprised by how quickly the discussion had turned aggressive. The flight attendant tried to maintain his professionalism, but the argument had become personal. In conclusion, well, don't consider this a conclusion or an end for that matter of fact. It's just the beginning. For the ideas that were illegal 10 to 20 years ago is now legal and practiced on a regular basis. We don't know what's next to come. Will Wokeism have a new avatar? Well, we'll just need to wait, dot dot. And while you do so, make sure to subscribe to our channel and give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching and keep the discussion alive.